anymore. They don't want to stare into their, their black, soulless eyes. And mm -hmm. uh, then things finally went black for me. And that was the memory I was I was left with. Did you have a feeling that some say that they are a servant class of, of uh, I won't use the word droid, but I'll throw it out there to give you the, the impression. Are they, or are they a race unto themselves? Well, I, I don't know. I mean, I've only seen them. I mean, I, I've done lots and lots of research into the entire subject matter of UFOs and ETs ever since, well, the Silver Disc encounter. I, it's become a very active part of my life. I have to try and come up with reasons on why things are occurring as they are if not for me for everybody else to help them see what's going on and uh, from what I see I mean people laugh at the thought of reptilians the species reptilians but um, they seem to be a very predominant species in the early part of our history in, in this mm -hmm. world and uh, now it's and not that way it seems to be the greatest then is it possible that the reptilians or whatever um, are using this race to do their experimental work because you've had so many, you know, different objects and different crafts, you know, I don't know how many they might have, but, but uh, you know, just looking at that aspect of it and thinking, you know, and then you bring up the reptilians. Yeah. Maybe Hang on, Brian. We'll be right stuff. back in just a minute. Okay, let's get back to a very interesting life. This young man, Todd, has lived through things that uh, would leave a lot of people just mute. Uh, fortunately, he is not, and he is sharing an amazing amount of material with us. And uh, would like to hear more, Todd, please. Um, I, I'm not really sure where I should pick up from because I know we're kind of limited for time and I have well, so we many have encounters that I do want to share. But another half an hour, so just get to as many as you can. Um, okay. Uh, the next encounter that I had was uh, later on during the year. I was with a friend of mine, my best friend that I was building that log home with or resurrecting it with. Uh, we had gone out to Ontario, east of Manitoba, to do some transport of logs for a friend of ours. And uh, we were coming back and just into the Manitoba border once again, heading west. It was around 7.30 at night, um, August 27th to be exact. So the sky was clear. And there was still much light out. It wasn't near dark yet. And... Uh, I had looked up to the sky to the north and above, and I saw this backwards sea shape in the sky. It was white. At first, I thought a contrail from a jet or something, or a very strange-looking cloud. And I watched it for a few minutes, and it didn't seem to dissipate, and it was staying the exact same, and it seemed to be almost moving. As my buddy was driving along, I pointed it up to him, pointed up to him, and I said, "What do you think that is?" And he really didn't have any idea what to make of it either. I'd never seen anything like it. It was it was pretty high distance up. I I would say probably around the height of a, a jet airliner. But as we were traveling, I noticed that it was gaining distance from us, and we were traveling at approximately 110 kilometers an hour, and uh, it was still gaining gaining distance I ended up watching this for about 45 minutes trying to come up with what it could be I actually watched this large jet airliner passed right by it it was heading east while this object was heading west and it came so close there was no way that the pilots or anybody on on the jet could have missed seeing it it, it just seemed like I thought to myself how could they just you know not see that right so I, I sat there watching it with my buddy as we continued driving west, and it continued to pull away from us, heading in the same direction. It never altered course, and eventually it just got so far away we lost it in the horizon. And uh, I found it to be a very peculiar sight, 
but it wasn't near as as near as other things that I had seen, but still one for for my books anyway. <laughs> um, a little while later, we're we'll go up to September second in two thousand and five. Summer was coming to an end and fall was already setting in and I had been working on the cabin all day with my buddy. We went to the south end of the lake for a quick supper and a shower at the campground down there seeing as we don't have the luxury of that kind of stuff on the north side. And um, we were traveling north after we had our food and showers and we're heading back to the cabin and we're coming up to the property. We just came on top of a hill when all of a sudden my buddy slammed on the brakes. He was the first one to see this in the sky and he said, what is that? I looked over and just hanging above the north side of our lake, pretty much where mm-hmm. where our cabin is, our campsite is, was this very large orange sphere. And uh, it was probably about 40 yards uh, above the north shore and how big it was is really hard to say. It was larger than our cabin, and our cabin's 25 feet by 25 feet. So I'm I'd, I'd probably about 40 feet across at least, 40 feet in diameter. And it seemed to be orange itself. It wasn't glowing orange light, but the object itself, the sphere itself, seemed to be orange. <laughs> So we well, that's okay. Now, you, you couldn't see through it. It wasn't translucent. It, nope, was, no, it appeared it was to solid. be solid, right? You yeah. you have seen so many of the classic shapes, objects that uh, that I can remember. This It's a just remarkable Brian bike that uh, yeah. one man could have this many and this varied and experiential ledger. I mean, he's seen it all. You know, I, I tell you, every time I see something new, it doesn't doesn't stop shocking me and my heart rate heart rate still starts pounding and you know it's all very each time is a new experience it's never the same i know that and i really never know what to expect and i certainly never am comfortable around it when it happens at all <laughs> I understand so they they haven't they and they're a, all we can do is guess but let's say they're in several different groups they have not endeared themselves to you or is there one of these experiences, is there one event that has left you feeling okay? Okay? As yeah, okay. In- not, not repulsed, not disgusted, not like you don't want to do it again. I mean, they're always exciting and scary, uh, and you get your heart rate going. But have you had the feeling that any of these beings are friendly and kindly toward you? Or is it all business? Well, no, I, again, I'll, I'll say that they're here for because they have to be. They're responsible for our being here. They're not here to be our protectors or our watchers. They will intervene, apparently, at times, but they're not here to be our saviors by any means. And um, what I was left with during one of my encounters, I was, I'm going to say, seated with knowledge of things to come. I won't say I was told it because I was never told it, but it was placed inside of me. All right. Well, hang on, Todd, if you would, please. And you're stepping into the area that most people want to hear about, the future. And whatever you think it may or may not be, we're we're all ears. So if you'd like to share that with us, we'll do that in just a few minutes. So hang on. Uh, It's quite an amazing story. Todd is our special guest. Okay, Todd, let's kind of go along with your your statements that you were given a sense of where we were headed potentially on this planet. Yeah, I uh, well, I was seeded with knowledge, and that's the best I can say. I wasn't actually told anything. Well, if I was, I don't remember it. I just have it right inside of me. And um, what I know through them is that there is an event to come, and it will be. 